Now you can attend Helicopter Online Ground School from the comfort of your own home, at your own pace, 24 hours a day, at www.helicopterground.com. Hello, I'm Kenny Keller, the owner of Fort Wayne Helicopters and the creator of Helicopter Online Ground School. I've built a presentation on the Robinson SFAR 73. This can be pretty tough when you sit down and look at the FAR A manual and you read through the SFAR. It is somewhat confusing for most of us. So I built this presentation to help kind of break it down a little bit. My reference source was the 2014 FAR A manual for this presentation. So I built this to try to help break it down, but by all means, be familiar with SFAR 73 by going through the FAR AIM manual yourself, especially if you're going for your CFI, or you're getting your sign off for the R22 or the R44, you have to really understand this before you go see the examiner. This is my own personal interpretation of what the SFAR says. Feel free, if you think I don't state something exactly correct, feel free to put a comment in the section below and we can get the conversation going. There's three sections. One and number three are both about two or three sentences long. There's not much to those. The meat of the SFAR is in the number two section. So when you're going through and trying to decipher this, you have to kind of break it down. There's required training, aeronautical experience, endorsements, and flight review. Section one is applicability, which is basically stating anybody who seeks to manipulate the controls or act as PIC, these SFARs apply to you. Applies to anyone that wants to operate either one of these aircraft. And you have to have awareness training prior to operating an R-22 or an R-44. And the awareness training has to be completed by a properly endorsed Robinson authorized instructor. If you were flying an R-22 or R-44 prior to April 26, 95, and you met the experience requirements, I believe this SFAR is stating that after that date, April 26, 95, you would have to get the awareness training and endorsement to continue flying the Robinson, either helicopter. So even though you were current prior to that date, after that date, you have to have the awareness training. So the awareness training has to be completed by a properly endorsed CFI, and the training must consist of energy management, mass pumping, low rotor RPM blade stall, low G hazards, and rotor RPM decay. It then tells us a person who can show completion of the Robinson safety course after 1194 may obtain an endorsement from an FAA safety inspector in lieu of having the awareness training. So the next is aeronautical experience. So to act as PIC in R-22, you have to have 200 flight hours in helicopters, of which 50 of those hours have to be in the R-22. Or you can get 10 hours of dual instruction in the R-22. You'll need that endorsement in the logbook. has to be from a Robinson authorized instructor. And then to keep that PIC currency, beginning 12 calendar months after endorsement, you have to have a flight review in the preceding 12 calendar months and that endorsement for that review has to be in your logbook. And the dual must include enhanced auto rotation procedures, engine rotor RPM control without governor, low rotor RPM recognition and recovery, and effects of low G maneuvers and recovery procedures. No person may act as pilot in command of an R-44 unless they've had 200 flight hours in helicopters, 50 flight hours in the R-44. Now, the PIC may credit 25 in the R-22 towards 50-hour requirement of the R-44, or 10 hours of dual instruction in Robinson helicopters, and at least five of that has to be in R-44. The other five could be in R-22 if you've already got the R-22 time. So you could do five in the R-22, five in the R-44, and then get the sign-off for the PIC from, again, an authorized instructor. Same deal on the flight review. You're going to have to have a flight review, and that flight review will have to be in your logbook to continue to act as PIC. And in that dual training, you'll need training in enhanced auto rotation procedures, engine rotor RPM control without governor, low rotor RPM recognition and recovery, and effects of low G maneuvers and recovery procedures. For a person who does not hold a category in class rating, example, student pilots, you must have 20 hours dual instruction in the R-22 with logbook endorsement prior to solo. And once you get that endorsement, it'll be valid for 90 days. And the instruction that you get in those 20 hours must include enhanced auto rotation procedures, engine rotor RPM control without governor, low rotor RPM recognition recovery, effects of low G maneuvers and recovery procedures. Same thing for the R-44. You have to have 20 hours of dual instruction prior to solo. You'll need that endorsement in your logbook for the solo sign off. And that endorsement is valid for 90 days. And again, instruction has to include the auto rotation procedures, rotor RPM control without governor, low rotor RPM recognition and recovery, and affects the low G maneuvers and recovery procedures. No certified flight instructor may provide instruction in an R-22 or an R-44 helicopter unless they first complete the awareness training. And for the R-22, you have to have 200 flight hours in helicopters of at least 50 in the R-22. Or for the R-44, you have to have 200 flight hours 50 hours in Robinson helicopters, and you can substitute 25 of R-22 time with the 50-hour requirement in the R-44. So 
So 25 hours in the R22, 25 hours in the R44, then you can be eligible to get the sign off to teach. So you'll have to go to a examiner to get the sign off to teach in the R22 or the R44, and you have to have training that includes, again, enhanced auto rotation procedures, rotor RPM control without governor, low rotor RPM recognition recovery, and effects of low G. Now for the flight review. After becoming PIC in an R22, the flight review must be taken in the R22 to stay current in the R22. That's it. Same thing for the R44. Your flight review for the R44 has to be in the R44, so there are two separate flight reviews. If you want to stay current in both, you'll have to have flight reviews in both. And flight review will include review of awareness training subject areas and flight training. Then for currency requirements, no person may act as PIC of an R22 or R44 carrying passengers unless the PIC has met the recency of flying experiments requirements of 6157 in a R22 or R44 as appropriate. So again, depending on which one you're flying to take out passengers, you've got to be recent in that particular helicopter, whether it's the R22 or the R44. And then section three basically is just saying that the SFAR is in effect until it's revised or rescinded. So I hope that helps a little bit. When you really dig into these, you might have to read it five times, 10 times, 20 times. I know when I first started going over it, I really had to dig into it. It's, it's kind of hard to read and it seems confusing at first, but the more times that you go over it and you go over it, it'll start making a little bit more sense. So thanks for checking out this presentation. Again, any comments or questions, put down in the box below. And please share with anyone that you think could use a little help with the SFARs.